Proverbs chapter 3, very, very quickly. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. I want to read, um, minister a word today, commemorating this. He said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. I want to speak today on the subject, pathway to destiny. Pathway to destiny. What it takes to reach where you are meant to reach in life. What it takes to become who you are meant to become in life. And I'm going to give certain general note. First of all, the best thing a person can be in life, let me talk to you. The best person you can be in life is who God wants you to be. On this pathway to destiny, note number one. The best person you can be in life is who God wants you to be. Not who society wants you to be. Not even who you want to be. Who God wants you to be. Number two, the best place you can be in this world is where God wants you to be. Not where somebody wants you to be. Not where everybody is running to, to, be, to stay. But where God wants you to be. Thirdly, the best person you can marry in this life is the, is the person who will fulfill divine plan and purpose with your life is the person who will fulfill God's plan and purpose with you the person you will marry in this life is the person who will fulfill divine plan and purpose with your life that is it is not just a marriage of persons but a marriage of purpose not just a, of a marriage of individuals, but a marriage of purpose. The best person you can marry in this life is the person who will complement your destiny on earth and assist your eternity in heaven and assist you towards eternity in heaven. Very important. Fourth thing to note is that success in life is success at God's plan and purpose for your life. Success in life is success at God's plan and purpose for your life. We can only say a person is successful if that person succeeded in the purpose of God. Success at the wrong thing is failure indeed. 
You succeeded in doing the wrong thing. It's failure. You succeeded in, in achieving what needed not be achieved at all. It's failure. Finally, the worst form of failure in life is the failure to be who God wants you to be. It's not the failure to get money. It is not the failure to get a job. It is not the failure to make friends. It is the failure to be who God wants you to be in life. Did you hear that? What have I said? The best person you can be in life is who God wants you to be. The best place you can be in this world is where God wants you to be. The best person you can marry in this life is the person who will fulfill divine plan and purpose with your life. That is, it is a marriage of purposes, of purpose, not just a marriage of persons. Success in life is success at God's plan and purpose for your life. And the worst form of failure in life is the failure to be who God wants you to be. Please share this message with your friends. Share this message with your loved ones. Invite somebody to join right now. Having said all of this and having seen the vital necessity of, of being in God's plan and purpose for, for our lives, the question is, what is the pathway to destiny? What is the pathway to being everything God wants you to be in life? It was outlined in scriptures. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. What is the pathway to destiny? You want to reach there. You want to reach there. You want to reach where God wants you to reach in life. You want to get where God wants you to get to in life. What is the secret? Number one, trust in the Lord. With all your heart. Not with a portion of your heart. With all your heart. If you are to ask me, trust in the Lord with all, all, your, all my heart, what is the meaning of that? Simple. Trust God with your life. Trust him with your life. It is like the way a parent will give hand over a child to a neighbor, a relation or a friend and say, please keep this child for me. Let me go to work and come. Trust God with your life. Trust him with your destiny. Trust God with your future. Come to the point where you, you have realized that God can never and will never mismanage your life. Come to the point where you realize that God will never waste your life. He will not waste your time. Many people don't trust God. They trust themselves. They trust many things. They organize things they are by themselves. Trust in the Lord. Don't forget this for as long as you live. Those who trust, don't rust. Those who trust in God, don't rust in life. And those who wait on God, don't waste in life. My eyes are upon you, Lord, all of my hope 
is in you. I cannot fear what the future holds. For you hold the future in your hands. I cannot fear what the future holds. For you hold the future in your hands. Are you ready to trust God? There are those who trust charm. There are those who trust in luck. Trust the Lord with your life. Lord, I hand you my life. Lord, I hand you my future. That's the first thing. Number two. Don't depend on your abilities and mentality. Don't depend on your abilities and mentality. He said, lean not unto your own understanding. Hear me. Your wisdom is not enough to take you to your destiny. <laughs> because you don't know, you, don't, you, don't, you didn't create the future, you don't have an idea of where you are meant to reach in life. It is a waste of time to depend on your human wisdom, your fickle mind to take you to your destiny. Your wisdom is not enough to take you to your destiny. Your resources cannot guarantee your results. I'm talking of the resources of your life. Your wisdom your gifts, your talent, your money, your education, your connection, they can't guarantee your results. Your resources cannot guarantee your results. Your IQ. There are those who rely heavily on common sense. And like God's servant, Bishop Yedeba once said, common sense can only guarantee common results. You need superior sense to have superior results. Lean not onto your own understanding. Let me look at some translations. If you have the Living Bible, you can. This translation is the New International Version. It said... Lean not unto your own understanding. The Living Bible said, If you want favor with both God and man, and a reputation for good judgment and common sense, then trust the Lord completely. Don't ever trust in yourself. Don't ever trust in yourself. Because yourself will be your greatest failure. Don't ever trust in yourself. Don't ever trust in yourself. The, the New Living Translation said, Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Do not depend on your own understanding. The Message Bible said, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. There are people who trusted in their own understanding, their own wisdom, and step into a job that wasn't their job. There are people who trusted in their own understanding and mental calculations and permutations. They just worked it out in their mind. If I should go to Canada now, or go to America now, Go to Lagos now, or go to Abuja now, or go to so and so place now. From so and so calculation, I know I can make it. Well, it is good for us to have the brain to use to think and reason. But I can tell you, if you just rely solely on your physical calculations and permutations and orchestrations, you miss it. You can see a man or a woman that looks like an angel that is a devil inside. 
And you married because you looked at him. He looked like an angel. You relied on your understanding. I heard a funny story of, uh, not funny, terrible story, but the funny part, I'll tell you why it's the funny part. A, a young man who was in the marriage counseling class and he won the award as the best um, uh, groom to be in the class in terms of gentility and character, and in terms of facial, in terms of look like a dove. He won the award of the best in that class of potential couples who were doing their premarital counseling and wedded, I think it was in December, and the marriage could not reach up to even two weeks before he manifested himself who he was and, and began to beat the hell out of his wife. This person who was so gentle and so nice till he won the award So when you look at such a person physically and you, you know, you leaned on your own understanding. Oh, that's, that's a good man. or oh, that's a good woman. Human beings see container. God sees content. Human beings see the moment. God sees the future. That is why it is very, that is why it is disastrous to lean on your understanding. Maybe that job that you are struggling for will lay off staff just after three months. But it looks so good now. Maybe it will bring you into compromises. That is why it is not good to lean on just physical senses. If you want to fulfill your destiny, to reach where God wants you to go. Don't depend on your abilities and mentality. Number three, in all your ways. Acknowledge him. All your ways. Acknowledge him in all your ways mean what? Involve him. Involve him in the steps of your life. Involve him in the faces of your life. Involve God in the seasons of your life. If you are going to reach where he wants you to reach. Please note what I'm about to say and don't forget it for life. Never take major destiny decisions without clearance from above. Never take major destiny decisions without divine clearance. To do that is to cut disaster. Never. Never. Major destiny decisions without clearance from above. The message Bible said, listening for God's voice in everything you do. Verse 6. Everywhere you go, he is the one who will keep you on track. Listening for God's voice in everything you do and everywhere you go, he is the one who will keep you on track. That's in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways. The living Bible said, verse 6, in everything you do, put God first. In everything you do. Lord, it is true that this job is more pain. Yes, alright. In everything you do, put God first. You will crown your efforts with success. You direct you and cry your efforts with success. Father, it is true that this job pays more than this job. But are you leading me to this one because of pay? In everything you do, put God first. In everything you do, put God first. The, 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 the message says, listen for his direction. The Bible in basic English says put all your hope in God not looking to your reason. I'm starting from verse 5. Not looking to your reason for support. 
That's right. In all your ways, give ear to him. And he will make straight your paths. What do I mean when I say major destiny decisions? Seek divine clearance. For example, career decision. Are you a politician? By career, are you a businessman? Are you an academician? What career is yours? I was speaking with somebody the other day who I perceive missed his career path. Somebody who would have been a very great potential in another line of work. Literally. Even within the same career. It's possible for somebody can be a businessman but is facing another line of business that he has no business to face. <clears throat> somebody could train as a medical doctor and God has for him as a pathway the academic line plus practice line. Become a consultant, pediatrician and then become a professor of pediatrics lecturing and training students so in that means you are impacting their lives. And also functioning in the teaching hospital. So you are also touching people's bodies. Maybe that could be a career pathway. But he settled down in a general hospital somewhere. And just ended his, finished himself there. Just settled there. He's a chief medical officer. He's this, he's that. All is, is, is the same practice. But what of the pathway? Are there those who are meant to be in that general hospital setting? With, without a doubt, they are there. So, major decisions of destiny, career decisions. Maybe in the legal profession, the one is meant to be the pathway of litigations and then go this way and become the top of a senior advocate of Nigeria or senior advocate of something. But he branched towards another path. One is meant to be on the bench as a judge. But he branched towards another path. Major decisions of destiny. You see people take steps that usher them out of God's plan and purpose. For, for life. And they are wondering and they are figuring out where did I miss it. What's, something doesn't seem to gel well. Major decisions of destiny. Marital decisions. That's the most, I think, will be the, one, the most important. Who to live with for the rest of your life. There is something worse than being single. And that is being hooked up with the wrong person for life. I heard the story of a man, I think an Italian man, who resisted quarantine and went out in, into went out that the police should arrest him. When they arrested him, say what happened? He said, "Oh, I have something worse than coronavirus in the house. That is my wife. To remain in that home with that same woman locked down together is worse than coronavirus. What a disaster! Hooked up to the wrong person for life." That is why it is important to make major destiny decisions by divine clearance. What of decisions of location? Where to live? To live in Nigeria? Where in Nigeria? To live outside Nigeria? Just tell somebody's with all due respect to everybody in America and everybody in Canada and um, Europe and everywhere you are, God bless you for as long as that is where God wants you to be. Congratulations. But there are those who have who took themselves where God never took them. There are, it's possible there are also those who are here who are meant to be somewhere out. And there are those out there who are meant to be here. <clears throat> Many people 
just usher their lives out of destiny with presumptuous actions. Isaac was trying to go down to Egypt. <clears throat> Maybe he saw everybody going and the Lord appeared to him in Genesis 26. As for you, you will not go to Egypt. What, what do you want? Remain in this land and I will bless you in this land. Isaac remained and God blessed him. Not all that glitters is gold. Not all that moves is fish in water. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Never force yourself to feel right about what you don't feel right about. Never force yourself to be at peace with what you have lost peace with. Never. And like Bishop Oyedek was saying that, Father in the Lord, no matter how far you have gone in the wrong direction, a U-turn a is possible at any point. I am on the road going to my degree, for example, and I come to Zaria and I turn left towards the road going towards Katz, Zamfara State and Sokoto State. Instead of going the other way through Kano, through to my degree. And then I reach Guso only to realize that I am following the road to Sokoto. And I ask people, I say, which road is this? Is it Sokoto Road? And they say, where are you going? I say, I'm going to my degree. What do you do? Because you are on Sokoto Road and you have gone far, what do you do? You will continue until you reach Sokoto, right? No way. I can say, let me just continue and let me just reach. No way. To reach and go and do what there. It was my degree I was going, so I make a U-turn. It doesn't matter how long it takes me, I'm reaching my degree. <clears throat> it's God speaking. That is why so many people are wondering why they are not where they should be in life. First of all, trust the Lord with all your heart. Hand him your future. Don't be double-minded about it. Hand him <clears throat> Commit into his hand your life. Second, refuse to trust in your ability and mentality. Don't rely. Don't consult your, your normal understanding for the purpose of God for your life. Finally, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Clear and reclare. Check and recheck. Lord, am I on the right path? Lord, am I doing the right thing? Lord, am I where I'm meant to be? Am I doing what you want me to do with my life? Lord, is this relationship of you? I am not in favor of a broken relationship. And I enc encourage everybody, please don't enter a relationship you are not sure of. But by every means, a relationship that did not succeed is a million times better than a marriage that is a failure. That The meaning of that is, even if wedding was tomorrow, and you realize today that you are on the wrong path, a youth turn is still possible. I've seen people... Realize they, they, are, they are making the mistake on the wedding day. A young man sent me a text message on his wedding day that he, he realized he has made a mistake. What? This wedding. On the wedding day, the morning. I said, What's going to happen? He said, I can't continue. I said, What? He said, I can't continue. You see, as the day approached, the, as the more the day approached, the more I lost my peace and now I am about to enter a deadly trap. Everybody had gathered. Everything. I am not God and I am not him and I wouldn't live with the house with him. I said, do what you think you can defend and do what you feel is right between your conscience and God. If you took yourself and you are that close and you realize you made a mistake, you turn. You took yourself to 
Germany or took yourself somewhere and you realize you have located yourself in the wrong place, you turn. You came to Nigeria instead of remaining in America or, or, or being there and you, made, and you realize you made a mistake, you turn. That's how life is. Acknowledge him. That's the way to destiny. And never, don't ever feel, don't ever think you are too perfect to be wrong. Don't ever think you are too spiritual to be wrong. You need the humility to accept that you are a person. And that you can miss it at any time. As prophetic as Samuel was, he missed it plenty times. The Bible said his word never fell to the ground. Yet he saw David, he saw Shaman and Binabad, and he thought that it was the Lord's anointed. Nobody is too big to miss God. So you keep on checking and, and, and rechecking. Checking and rechecking. Cross-checking and cross-checking. Be humble enough to say I missed it. You gave a wrong prophecy. Be humble enough to say you, you missed it this time. <laughs> In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what will he do? He will direct your path. He will, that is, that is, and, and I like this, but he will direct your path. Let me give you, let me show you three meanings of that word, direct your path. Then we'll end there. Number one, direct your path means he will give guidance to your steps. Guidance to your steps. That is, by vision, by revelation, by hearing. You are about to step into a wrong marriage and you saw a terrible dream. Terrible revelation. Concerning the step. And it's repeated, repeated, repeated. And it is confirmed by other means. Loss of peace. And other things. Physical misbehavior of the person. You are, you are about to get married to. He gives, he gives guidance to your steps. He will show you in dreams, show you in vision, show you in revelation. Speak to your heart. Speak to your ears. Speak through others to you to confirm what he's already telling you. That is what he means. By the time you Trust me with your life. By the time you have decided not to lean to your own understanding. By the time you consult me for every major decision of your life. He's saying, be, be assured. I won't leave you in confusion. I won't leave you to your wisdom. I will bring you guidance. I will talk to you time to time. This is exciting. That is fulfill your part. Hand over your life to me. Trust me with your future. Trust me not to mismanage your life. Don't depend on what you know. Don't depend on your certificate, your education. Don't depend on all those things. Depend on me. Acknowledge me in your steps. Any move you want to make is clear from me. Ask me. Pray. Commit it into my hand. Then, I will bring you guidance. I will leave you to yourself. This is how I have lived my life. I will bring you guidance. I will show you in revelation. I will show you in vision. You know, God is just a wonderful God. You see, one day I was trying to get close to somebody. I like the person in the physical. Everything appeared clear. Everything appeared normal, appeared good. Until one day. I, know, I, I, was, I mean, I've said, shared this many times in the church. Somebody I, I mean, I loved, I, I was in love with him. Draw, draw things. I saw things that look like this is God. Almost contemplated inviting such a, that person over so that, that, at that time. And then suddenly I saw in the revelation this person was standing, dream of the night, 
standing like this with a mighty serpent python, his height. They were together standing. And he was telling me, oh, he knows the, that's, you know, and if I need anything from him, I should let him know. Something like that. I woke up with a start. I said, this is not what I'm looking for. I told my wife, I said, see what I saw concerning this situation. And my wife said, God loves us. He loves us, so he doesn't want us to miss it. That is God for you. Just trust me with your future. In all your ways. Don't lean to your understanding. Acknowledge me. Involve me in the things you do. Don't hide anything. From, see, anything you are trying to hide from God shows something is wrong with it. You don't want to commit that business to God. It means there is something fraudulent and fishy about the business. You don't want to pray about it. You don't want to. You are afraid of asking God whether that relationship is of him. Then something is wrong with it. Anything you cannot freely submit to the scrutiny of God has a challenge. Anything you don't want to involve God, something is wrong with it. I've seen people talk about this is business, church apart, this is business. He will bring guidance. This is sweet. When you have done all that, what will he do? He will guide. He will give guidance to your steps. Number two, in all, he will direct your path. Number two means he will orchestrate the events of your life. He will just orchestrate things. This orchestration now does not necessarily mean you saw a vision or you dreamt a dream or he said something to you. He just causes you to be at the right place at the right time. He causes you to collide with opportunities. Suddenly, he brought you into an arena where your husband-to-be is. And just pulled things together for you. Suddenly, he opened your eyes to see an opportunity that others are not seeing. He would direct, I would direct your path, means I will orchestrate the events of your life. You won't be seeing too much of coincidences and accidents. You'll just be entering things organized and orchestrated. What a faithful God. Like he did for Ruth. Whose steps he orchestrated to be in the field of Boaz. The Bible says she happened. It was her hap. To glean wheat in the field of Boaz. She was looking for grain. And Boaz came and said, oh, who are you? Long story made short. Ruth became the owner of the field where she was looking for food. She married the man from whose field she was begging for food. The Bible said it was her hap. That is God ordered her steps, orchestrated the event, and they met together. When God spoke to Moses to go and deliver his people from Israel, from Egypt, at the same time that Moses was going towards the land of Egypt in the wilderness, he orchestrated the steps of Aaron. He said, Aaron, the Hebrew is your brother. He's on his way coming to meet you. Now, he orchestrated. He's a master orchestrator. If you can, if you can, he says, if you can just trust me with your life. If you will not just depend on your own intelligence. If you can just involve me in the things you do, I personally will orchestrate your life events. God has orchestrated too, too many events in my life. Marital events. Destiny events. Every, just, 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 you are just stepping at the right place at the right time. This is sweet. He will orchestrate the events of your life and finally he will frustrate moves that are wrong <laughs> I love you too much to allow you to miss it he will frustrate moves that are wrong 
That is part of directing your steps. It's like holding a rope to your waist and pulling you from where you are not meant to go. He will frustrate moves that are wrong. Why is everybody being given green card and he didn't give me my own? God is saying I'm frustrating it. It's because this is not part of my plan for now. I love that girl so much and she's saying no, 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 no. God is saying you are seeing a Delilah, a Jezebel, a demon incarnate or somebody who is fully possessed but you can't see her now. I want to stop you from marrying him. Ha. Oh, marriage is almost said that the man has changed his mind. Oh, there are some that are just demonic activity, just trying to frustrate your life. And there are some, it was God, who is deliberately frustrating it. There are many times we pray against what God himself is doing. Am I communicating? He said, no, I don't want you to go that way. I don't want you to move in this direction. I don't want you to follow that pathway. So I am hindering you, I am hindering you, I am hindering the process. I am hindering the process. That is not part of my agenda for your life. So next time you are facing a hindrance, ask God, are you the one or is it the devil? <laughs> he will hinder. He will frustrate. He will orchestrate. He will frustrate the wrong moves. Do you remember Psalm 23 verse 1? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Do you know the meaning of that? I was missing road. He pulled me back. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the right paths of righteousness. That is, he pulled me back and placed me on the right path. He pulled me back. There are many that God delivered from wrong friendships. Suddenly you see the person's behavior changed. He pulled me back. He pulled me back. He didn't make it work. How many of you know that Joseph made a demand of the butler after he interpreted the butler's dream? Do you remember? Most, Joseph told the butler Please mention me to Pharaoh. I didn't do anything before they sold me here. Mention me to Pharaoh. And do you remember what scripture said? And the butler forgot Joseph. Forgot. Not forgot to forgot. Because if he forgot, he may remember. But he forgot. Do you know I used to say that forgot is the past tense of forgot. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. He forgot. <laughs> if you kill him, he will remember. Because he didn't forget, he forgot. If he forgot, he could have been reminded, but he forgot. It escaped the recesses of his memory cells. Nothing will make the butler remember. And I believe it was God who made him to forget? Because think for a moment. If the wish of Joseph was fulfilled and the butler had remembered and mentioned Joseph to Pharaoh. It may be something like this. Excuse me, sir. There is a young man I met in the prison. He is a very, very good young man. In fact, it's the reason why I'm back to my office now. He prophesied, gave me accurate prophecy. He will be a good hand in the palace work here. Pharaoh may have said, Butler, do you have space in your department? You say, yes, oh yeah, there will be space. I, I can create a space. You say, okay. Bring him for interview. He would have been interviewed. Unemployed. 
in the food and beverages department, the kitchen. On the, that's where the butler is the head. And he is a servant in the palace. But that was not God's plan for Joseph. He would have remained and died there. But God made the butler to forget. So that the normal pathway can happen. And God gave Joseph a dream that no magician could interpret. Gave Pharaoh a dream. So that Pharaoh himself can locate Joseph by divine connection. When the butler said, I now remember. It was not the butler who was now linking Joseph to Pharaoh. Joseph did not need Pharaoh now. It was Pharaoh that needed Joseph now. <laughs> and when that connection happened, Joseph became the head of Egypt with the butler who forgot him under him. Everybody apart from Pharaoh was under Joseph. That, is a, that was why the butler needed to forget Joseph. Joseph would have been under the butler he would have owed the butler thank you for life. He would have owed him, owed him gratitude for life. But not now. Butler, <laughs> you are not the one who brought me out. God brought me out. I'm not the one who looked for Pharaoh. Pharaoh looked for me. That is why. If God has given you an assignment to fulfill in the court of Pharaoh, Never allow a man to connect you to Pharaoh. Let God connect you to Pharaoh. When God connects you, you are connected. When man connects you, you can be disconnected when the man is angry. Hallelujah. Do you see? So there are times God will frustrate certain things you want. Joseph wanted the butler to remember, but God frustrated it. Because God had another plan. Tell yourself God has another plan. That's what it means. He will direct your path. Means he will bring you guidance. He will bring you direction. He will show you things. He will speak to you. And then he will, he will then orchestrate events in your life. Place you at the right place at the right time. Cause you to connect with the right people at the right time. And then he will intercept wrong moves. Frustrate it. Things that are your own making, your own calculation or the calculation of the enemy. You will just cut it. You will be wondering why. But God knows why. Beloved, it is a new day for you. You will fulfill your destiny. I prophesy that this day that the Lord has made on your journey to destiny, you will not miss your road. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Wherever you are, be up standing, hands lifted, and appreciate God for his word to your life.